What's going on gamers? RC Styles here and with the dedicated servers of Friday the 13th shutting down on Friday the 13th for November 13th of 2020, I wanted to take as much time as I could to go over some Friday the 13th material as I really don't have all that much time to get back to playing it as I used to all the time. So we're going to run a lot of Friday the 13th today as part of Friday Night Frights. Starting with the Virtual Cabin, I'm going to break Virtual Cabin down uh, version by version. First one up is version 1.0 beta. So <clears throat> we're going to let this load up and then I'll start getting into everything. Alright gamers, so this is the first iteration of the cabin in its purest form. We can walk around at our leisure and look at everything that it has to offer without triggering anything serious. We may even notice a couple of locked doors. Ah, we'll see what happens when we get to those. <clears throat> Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and just basically tour everything to get the uh, idea of the layout before we really pick up anything. Last thing we're going to touch is like the newspapers and stuff like that. So there's the main living room. This computer is going to be very, very important as it's going to allow us to change between different versions of the cabin as well as uh, help completions with the puzzle. Let's get to know some of these counselors real quick. As part of the Kickstarter campaign, certain higher tier backers could get their likeness included in the game. One such generous backer was Eric J.R. LaChampa. LaChampa's best two, whoops, sorry, LaChampa's best two states, stats, excuse me again, are Repair 1010 and Stealth 810. It makes him a pretty good uh, person if you're trying to fix stuff, but it definitely fails in other ways. We're going to go down the hallway ignoring these doors for a minute. The next counselor that we're going to meet is Deborah Kim. On Friday the 13th, the game features a wide range of voiceover talent. The counselor, Deborah Kim, is voiced by veteran Christina V, who has helped voice many popular animated film projects. A little bit of interesting information here for everybody. So, this is going to come in handy in a little bit. We're going to go through here check out this room here it's just a storage area but we can hear some of the commentary from the producers here on the game what was the creepiest part about working on the game oh for sure the phone calls okay sorry um that was great can you start over but this time incorporate the question into your answer uh, my bad yeah so the creepiest part about working on this game was i get these weird phone calls to my personal phone we worked on the game for almost i think it was about three years and every single Friday the 13th we would get these calls from someone at first I thought it was someone at the studio Paul or Dan or something but it had to be like an F-13 fanboy or something they would use this voice distortion and claim to be Pamela warning us to honor the memory of her son sometimes they would just laugh on the phone and hang up but, but most of the time they would just you know <coughs> the game taking so long that doesn't sound that creepy it wasn't until one time I called the number back and heard this So there's a little, uh, a little spooky backstory for you here. Something about the shoes. Jason and Kane Hodder have a special connection in Friday the Thirteenth. Roundtable Hodder relies a little bit of what relays a little bit of what it's like to be so close to the icon. Every time I do a conversation. A, a convention or an appearance somewhere there will always be at least one person that says hey do the Jason walk and I'm like well that's kind of how I walk <laughs> like I said this thing's full of like little interesting tidbits I'm gonna check out a couple more things and then we'll get on with the puzzle <clears throat> J. 
Julius and Jason's boxing match in Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, was scripted to take place in Madison Square Garden, but for budgeting reasons, ended up taking place on a roof in Vancouver. The boxing scene, however, was not lacking for effort. Actor Vincent Craig Dupree, who played Julius, was, recent, was really punching Kane hotter with all his might. When it was Jason's turn, he punched Julius' head off, sending it flying into a dumpster. Little, little tidbit facts there. Huh. Just like teenagers, gotta leave a mess everywhere. Let's see here, I believe the bottle had something. After hooking up with Tina, Crispin Glover's character, Jimmy, goes downstairs for a celebratory bottle of wine. Not having the means to open the bottle, he calls out for a corkscrew. Jason obliges by slamming it into his head before hacking him in the face with a meat cleaver. You should be careful what you wish for in Friday films. I'd say that's quite accurate. The Big Apple. From a watery start to a toxic end, Jason spent Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, covered in goo, according to Kane Hodder. They put slime on him in every single shot. He was wet the entire movie. Oof. That had to be interesting. Stockpot. One particularly colorful character in Part 5 was loudmouth Ethel Hubbard, played by Carolyn L Locatell. In many ways, Ethel was the foil to Pamela Voorhees. Both were cooks, both had special sons, and both had a great set of hair. In Ethel's case, it was a wig that Locatel had from a movie she was in with Burt Reynolds called Sharky's Machine. Huh. This shit that I didn't even remember. Alright, I'm just going to check out a little bit more over here some of the locked doors we can go ahead and do now. I am not reading that. That is way too fucking small, but I'll leave it up on the screen for a few minutes so that you can read it. Alright. Another little perverted moment here. Kick open the door. Oh, just trying to take a shower. Jenny Myers, the character of Jenny Myers, known as the girl next door, is voiced by the talented Christina Klieb. Unlike her character, Christina is a bit of a traveler. Born in New York, Klieb spent her ugh, formative years in Germany, France, and Italy. Interesting. Oh, any of these of importance here? Cast photos. There's a nice little picture of Kane Hodder right up there, man. Kane Hodder, incidentally, is one of my favorite, favorite horror icons. And uh, as far as I am concerned, and a lot of people may dispute this, uh, he's the best Jason. Like I said, in my opinion. Uh, so, okay, we're going to go to the typewriter. The script for Jason Goes to Hell is exceptional in that not a single teenager was called for in the scripts. That is interesting. last long the most requested playable Jason was director Adam Marcus as actor Kane Hodder's version in Jason Goes to Hell this is iconic given how little screen time the movie gives to the corporal Jason that is so cool we're gonna end up having to do something with those masks in a little bit as well just bear with me a little blue hat over here was there anything else that I needed to check oh yeah Remember, we're leaving the magazines and stuff until later. Double Vision. Actress Camilla Moore auditioned for the role of Samantha. When the filmmakers discovered she had a twin sister, Carrie, they offered them both the foxy roles of Tina and Terry. This was not the first time Camilla and Carrie's acted together. They both have already starred in Double McGum commercials. That's quite interesting. Okay. I believe there's a blue hat we can look at, and then we'll go ahead upstairs. Blue Cap, the song that plays during Crispin Glover's idiosyncratic dance is Lion's Love is a Lie. However, during filming, it was ACDC's Back in Black that was played on the set. It's an interview with Glover recounts the scene that was the dance. I came up with it 
Ah, I came up with for it. They did not use Back in Black in the soundtrack. It was certainly an unusual way to dance to that piece of music, but the motions of the dance fit prop, uh, properly to that song if it is correctly synced. Huh. Over here, calendar. Out of the first 10 films, every Friday the 13th movie has been released on Friday the 13th, as on Friday, but only four have been released on Friday the 13th. It's quite interesting. Remember, we're going to leave this for a minute. I'm going to take a little walk upstairs. There's a diorama we can't do nothing with at the moment. Quick walk upstairs. Let you guys read that. It's a little too small. I'm moving on. Again, we're going to look at these little pieces of papers and stuff in a moment. I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. <laughs> a Long Night at Camp Blood Part 2. The screenplay for original Friday the 13th was literally titled A Long Night at Camp Blood. Director Sean S. Cunningham, however, had always wanted to name the name of the movie to be Friday the 13th. Even before he had finished the script, Cunningham took an advertisement out in a trade pub publication to stake the claim to the popular idiom the new title was successfully was was successful although you can still see references to camp blood sprinkled throughout the series and we can't really pick anything up yet but that will all change here momentarily on to the clues for the puzzle as I walk down here and then show you that there's a coming soon that we never got and I'll explain why in a minute <clears throat> another room in here I really don't think there's much to do in here with the exception that there's a book here no exit in one scene in part <clears throat> six a group of campers are shown to be sleeping in a cabin the camera pans over <clears throat> over a little girl who has fallen asleep reading John Paul's satire novel no, no exit novels about three people spending in spending eternity together in a small room and ends with the revelation hell is hell is other people quite an odd book for a child to be reading Again, you see a mask in there. That's going to come to play here momentarily. <clears throat> Unger report. John Shepard played the shell shock Tommy Jarvis in the fifth film, A New Beginning. Tommy, psychologically damaged by his run-in with Jason in the final chapter, is set to a treatment facility called Pinehurst Halfway Home. Shepard took the role seriously, spending a few months volunteering at a state mental hospital to prepare. <clears throat> Guard statue. Veteran Jason actor Kane Hodder plays three roles in Jason Goes to Hell. Not only does he play the titular character, J character, Hodder also plays a security guard who mocks Jason as, as the gloved hand who grabs the hockey mask. And the gloved hand who grabs the hockey mask in the final shot of the movie. I can't really read today. Sorry, guys. But okay, let's go ahead back down. and do this puzzle first we're going to pick up this newspaper over here oh, uh, okay well let's okay so did you want to do an intro uh hello welcome to the virtual cabin i'm chuck brengard ceo of ilphonic and we are the developers behind friday the 13th the game which you're currently playing now is there anything you want to say to the fans sure i just want to say thanks for playing and supporting the game our fan base has been incredible this project has exceeded even our wildest dreams, and that's because of all your continued and amazing support. So where are we? So this is the Virtual Cabin, 2.0 to be exact. The Virtual Cabin was a way for our backers to check out new art assets and discover a few hidden Easter eggs as we were building the game. It was a really engaging way to show a sneak peek at what we were developing. So, 
Why bring it back? A ton of work went into researching the Friday the 13th films for the game, and we wanted to present a fun way to go behind the scenes and learn more about how the movies and the game were made. Consider this as an expanded virtual museum, a space where you can explore the lore of Friday the 13th and take it all in. Who knows? There might even be a few new Easter eggs to discover. If you go digging deep enough... <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so ominous. Actually sounded kind of corny, and I do want to make one correction to what he said on the microphone. Yes, there is all the way up to 2.0, but we're only exploring the beta version of the cabin at this time. So, as I was saying, we're going to pick up these newspapers to figure out this little puzzle and move on. So the Crystal Lake Massacre, seven camp counselors killed by local woman in brutal mass murder. You can see a picture of young Jason's body. <clears throat> Second day of blaze arson suspected has nothing to do with it. So the newspaper. The part of young Jason was played by Arnie L L L L Liam, whatever. Originally, director Sean Cunningham wanted to cast his son, Noel. However, Noel's mother did not want her son to spend hours in a freezing New Jersey lake during fall. And that's pretty understandable here. Okay, so let's spin this thing, okay? You're going to notice that there's something on the back called Word Guess. And uh, there should be a way for me to rotate this. There we go. It's rotating. All right. Word guess week one. <clears throat> Furry friend with a purple collar. And this is going to be the first letter in our answer to these clues. Okay. Furry friend with a purple collar is Muffin. Muffin is a dog that was in part two, Friday the 13th, part two. So the first letter of the word muffin is M. So that is our answer to this in the first letter in the main puzzle, M. We're going to go ahead and keep walking around and find publication. Fanzine. Fanzine Magazine, part three, Debbie and Andy play the Tracy Savage and Jeffrey Rogers canoodle in a hammock. After returning from a shower, Debbie lounges with a Fangora magazine. She flips past an article about Tom Savini, the man behind many of the classic Friday special effects. Unluckily for her, Jason was hiding with a knife behind the hammock. So let's go ahead and flip this one around. This one is week six. <clears throat> Doomed Ocean Liner. Doomed Lo Ocean Liner. It's going to begin with the letter E. I can tell you that right now. It slips my mind at the moment, but it begins with the letter E. If anybody can tell me down in the description, in part 8... What was the name of the doomed ocean liner? It begins with an E. Also, that is the answer to the sixth letter in the puzzle is the letter E. So we have M as the first letter and E as the sixth letter. Or the fifth letter. I apologize on that one. Can't count today either. Let's go find some more publication magazines. <clears throat> Fashion Magazine, the role of Jason was played at, by at least four different people. In part two, the unmasked and hairy version of Jason was played by Warrington Gillette. Steve Deskowitz, whatever, did Jason's stunts for the majority of the movie. Jerry Wallace, who is credited as the Prowler, is said to have played the role in certain scenes. FX artist Carl Fullerton may have also appeared as Jason in the film as evidenced by a behind-the-scenes photo. However, the very first appearance of Jason was played by costume designer Ellen Lutter in a shot of Jason's feet walking towards Alice's apartment. Again, this is part two. So let's flip this around. Word guess, week five. Let me see how that says. Most films in mask. Most films in mask. It's the fourth letter. Most films in mask. The letter is going to be an H. The letter is... 
I think it's Kane Hodder, but I could be wrong because then that's not going to fit. Unless the last letter is an R, but still then you don't have enough letters to spell it Hodder. But in this case, that letter will be an H. More publications to be found. I've already looked at most of that, honey. Yeah, that's not what I'm looking for. Doors locked. That won't open yet. Is there a newspaper in here? There's no newspaper, but there is a bandana. Let's see what it has to say. Red bandana in Friday the 13th lore, or Friday lore. Steve Christ Christie is the entrepreneur son of David and Louise Christie, who owned Camp Crystal Lake at the time of Jason's drowning. Steve takes it upon himself to renovate the camp and reopens it by fixing the camp he draws. <clears throat> by fixing the camp, he draws the murderous ire of the killer, still reeling from Jason's death. Who knows if. If it hadn't been for Steve, perhaps Camp Blood would have remained dormant and the world would have been would have been bleh, the world would have been robbed of one of its greatest fictional villains. Okay, so more publication we're looking for, we're not seeing it right now. Walk around these little small areas. A book. Let's see if this book counts. Inferno Lake. Friday the 13th. It's more than a movie franchise. There is also a television series and a comic book miniseries and four novels to date. Nothing for us to find here. Let's take a walk upstairs in a minute. So upstairs. Jason Voorhees slain. Ah, come on, stop it. All right. Original mask owner. So basically, I'm going to let you guys do the rest of these um, as far as the answers to these. So you can go ahead and tell me in the descriptions what you think the answers are. And then I'll reply to you with the actual correct answers. <clears throat> but this one's going to be the second letter. It's highlighted that we need to know. I can give you the hint that the second letter in this one is going to be an O. The release of Friday the 13th, the game was slated for early 2017, a time frame that managed both to be wide and, for some fans, vague. The ambiguity came, caused quite a bit of bit of energy to be directed to gun media and, in particular, at the community manager, Ben Strauss. It actually became a meme with our community, said Strauss. Someone sent me a mug that said early 2017 on it in Friday the 13th font. That I heard on the bottom of cups, you can actually write something. Travel brochure, the original draft of Robert Hedden's script had some ambitious plans including a boxing match in Madison Square Gardens, a crane shot in Times Square, and a chase scene across the Brooklyn Bridge. The budget, however, quickly became an issue. Ultimately, much of the movie was filmed on a ship named the USS Princa Patricia in Vancouver, leading to many of the cast and crew to dub the movie Jason Takes Vancouver. This is not the name that we are looking for as far as the answer to that one question. <laughs> it 
So I still want you to go ahead and try to answer all those questions down in the description. And what I am also going to tell you is this. Each one of those highlighted parts are going to make the answer to the puzzle, which will serve as the password to this computer, which will take us in to virtual the next part of the virtual cabin. What you want to do is you want to select updates. Enter the password. The password is mother. So virtual cabin patch 1.0, we update the map, added downstairs display room, updated map, ported searchable furniture from main branch, user interface added inventory functionally, press A, press whatever button to access, controls add crouch functionality, press O for that, so the other one has to be square. Bug fix restoration telephone functionality. Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking into here coming up into the next video. I'm going to cut it here and then we'll come right back and do Pat, uh, Virtual Cabin 1.1.